Strategies. Joining us now is Greg Zuckerman, special writer at The Wall Street Journal. Great to see you again, Greg. Welcome. Great seeing you again. So first of all, let's set the scene here. For the most part, hedge funds had as bad a year as the rest of us. Yeah, it wasn't anything to get too excited about. It wasn't as bad as some, some recent years. Uh, hedge funds overall were down about four and a quarter percent, you know, relative to the 60-40 index, which I like to compare it to. That was good, but you don't want to get too excited. On an asset-weighted basis, though, in other words, um, where you acknowledge the bigger funds having done as well as they did, as some of them did do quite well, the industry was actually up 1%. So it's wow. not an awful year. Wow. So so the the biggest did better than everybody else, kind of like the S&P by market cap, it actually did okay? Yeah. So the big guys have, in the last few years, actually excelled. They are attracting better talent. They're better at risk management. They're often non-directional. And that obviously helps when the market, and both stocks and bonds, go down as much as they did. But when you look at some of the, uh, the bigger players, D.E. Shaw, Citadel, the Renaissance, um, the Medallion Fund is um, some breaking some news here for you right here. Those are good funds that have done kind of quasi quant, or they are quant, and that's one of the that's one of the strategies that have done quite well over the past year. How did we go from writing quant's obituary to it crushing everybody else here? Well, I don't want to go overboard. All quants haven't done especially well the past year, but in general. Um, if you were not directional, you've done pretty well. And if you look at some of the real embarrassments over the past year, you look at Tiger, for example, down 50 percent. They were kind of leveraged long and especially on technology tech and, on, yeah. and on privates, especially. And in some ways, that whole strategy has been discredited. Um, we did a really good story a few months back, my colleagues, about Tiger and about and if you dig into the story, how much they farm out. They paid Bain Capital, Bain a uh, hundred million dollars to do their due diligence wow. um, on some of their privates. So that whole strategy has really come under fire and in question right now. And the other guys, the ones who do risk management and have these big pods where they have people doing stat or other kinds of um, multi-strat kind of um, approaches, they've done much better. So, and just to be clear, so uh, statistical uh, arbitration funds, for instance, when, you, when we talk about quant and we say non-directional, you know, for people sitting at home, other than qualifying to put their money in some of these, what are the lessons to be learned that, that, that you basically have to have leading edge, you know, artificial intelligence, technology algorithms, you name it, to just kind of outsmart and outpace the markets or is there something what what more do we know about how they're able to turn it to generate this alpha yeah so the lesson here it's really hard to beat the market and frankly it's gotten harder during the course of my career the course of people's careers on wall street there's very little alpha outperformance getting information that whole information advantage that hedge funds used to rely on that's gone by the wayside and instead it's people taking a long and a short position on maybe two stocks within the same industry i'm really simplifying it but that's a way to make a bet without um, worrying and relying on the overall market going higher. So there are aberrations that do arise in the market. And frankly, it's because people like you and me, or at least me, <laughs> the fear and the greed of the individual investor. And the more we talk about these, these meme stocks and people taking, uh, um, um, getting into stocks that are going to go bankrupt, let's say, or potentially going to go bankrupt, like Bed Bath & Beyond, the, the strategies that can take advantage uh -oh, often, yes. often are the quantity ones. Yeah, so it, in fact, the very sort of, um, non-efficient, crowdsourced move in the meme stocks is generating alpha for the hedge funds that profit on, on these kinds of arbitrage strategies. Yeah, exactly. And frankly, that's where the talent's going. Um, they have these things called pods where they have groups of people and the people running these firms, in other words, Millennium, for example, and um, Two Sigma, some, uh, some others, they can allocate capital where it's most appropriate and they can also do risk management. And frankly, they just have a much, uh, they have a big advantage over the kind of smaller funds and we're seeing the performance uh, reflected accordingly. So message to the Reddit forums. <laughs> If you don't want to feed the outperformance of hedge funds, maybe don't don't create opportunities that they can exploit. Listen, I don't want to uh, cause any backlash uh, on, on Twitter and getting emails. But, yeah, in general, um, the millenniums and the uh, renaissances love volatility in the market. And they love people getting in individual investors. And frankly, historically speaking, they don't do quite as well as I don't want to say that the hedge funds, but yeah. some pros. So we are susceptible to the feed and the, the greer, the greed, I'm sorry, uh, greed and fear, and they can often take advantage.